people get stuck on the offer, by the way, they're thinking too much about themselves and their deliverable. And you'll automatically sell more of it because as soon as you get rid of their worst work, they're going to want more automatically without you even trying to sell it. Building any real fucking business, it doesn't matter whether it's an agency or an ice cream store or a consulting business or an e-commerce. Like, it takes time to build momentum. What's up, my guys, dudes and dudettes? Back for an exciting an, uh, another edition. We're probably going to take a week off, just so you guys know, next Monday. And uh, holy shit, some exciting stuff going on. This is attempt two. I'm hoping the sound quality. Our man Cole was here and Brian were telling me sound wasn't working. Um, just a little heads up. Uh, likely after Christmas, I'm going to do probably something that people have requested from me more than anything else. And I think you guys... Uh, are going to dig it, which is we're going to be doing a, a loom workshop. And this is for those of you guys who are looking for more help for dialing in what I call the hand raiser process, which is getting peeps to say, I'm interested in your video. Also dialing in the little bit of back and forth chat conversation. And then the videos themselves, which are in many cases, the most important leverage piece. And what this will enable you guys to do, hopefully, and I've had people actually do this just with the free training, but to be able to either organically make a post or run a little basic ad that's like a really stupid simple ad or uh, i've had people do this in outreach as well where you can send just a little short message or a little short post or a little short ad people say okay i'm interested in your video and then you have a little back and forth chat and you copy and paste a video link and then they just send you a stripe notification and say i'm in and and this has taken us personally from our sales process being these like long 60 90 minutes phone calls that were draining as fuck and maybe closing one out of four, one out of five, and having to chase people and send proposals and spending all our time on sales calls and not enough time actually serving the clients we have. Um, for those of you guys who are interested, I'm gonna make like a super irresistible, desirable offer if that's you and you're interested in doing that. Um, I probably will post that after the new year, but let's get into the good stuff. This is attempt two. I don't wanna have those guys have to listen to the whole intro again, but ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Frankie Finn proudly brings you our weekly Q&A. All right, thank you guys, Brian and uh, Cole for letting me know the sound works. Um, Back to the first question. I kind of half answered this, but I'm going to give you guys the full answer for the benefit. Josh says, team, first time poster. Grateful to be here. Good to have you, man. I'm leaving my current company and starting a new business on my own. Business process and management and automations. I did this for my previous business, an all-service digital marketing company. I've done all kinds of integration workflows for integration processes SOP writing breaking down my business to understand every task literally every task automation good hiring outsource practices now I'm taking my experience to other agency owners to help them scale via one-on-one -on -one group coaching and an online course I'm in my infant stages and trying to understand my first irresistible offer so I can shape my call to action and copy for the landing page something that I have gleaned from Frankie Finn as well as other invaluable p p posts Oh, stutter in there a little bit, is just to go for a first date. I'm guessing my irresistible offer should be a foot in the door so I can later upsell on the above service options. Do I offer a no strings attached strategy session, inexpensive help for the lowest hanging fruit of a business roadblock? What am I not um, thinking or seeing? Um, firstly, Josh, a couple of awesome things. Uh, good to have you here, my man. Uh, that's awesome that you left your job. Jobs are shit. I mean, I know most of the world needs jobs, but Thank fuck we're in a group of people who don't. Um, or for those of you guys who are in the transition of leaving, congrats on that. That's amazing. Um, so usually when people get stuck on the offer, by the way, they're thinking too much about themselves and their deliverable and what do I know, like know how to do. And almost always like an offer in essence, a high ticket transformational offer is a combination of who you're doing it for. So a lot of times people struggle with their offer because they can't articulate who they're doing it for like with enough specificity because the spe the meaningful specifics matter like it's there's a difference if, if you help a plumber get work cleaning toilets versus uh helping a, a dentist 
keep their hygienist busy and keep someone in the chair, even though it's like the same kind of thing as you're getting them more leads and sales. The specifics matter, right? Like I'm going to get you more dirty shit filled toilets is a different offer than I'm going to, you know, get you people sitting in the chair complaining you're hurting my teeth, even though they're essentially the same thing. So, so from a delivery perspective, they're the same thing. So that's why I say like having clarity about the who. So it sounds like in your case, the who is agency owners. Now, the other thing, two pieces are like, what sort of problems do they have now that your stuff helps alleviate? And what does that result look like for them, not for you, but for them in their life when it's finished? And I can tell you as somebody who's like built a lot of SOPs and helped a lot of other people and helped people scale agencies and that kind of stuff. Um, I have a guy, a friend of mine named Jeff J. Hunter, who runs a company called VA Staffer. They, they provide hundreds and hundreds of VAs for company. And he calls them, he has a brilliant name for him, I'm trying to remember. I think it's like Freedom Files or Freedom uh, Processes or Freedom Protocols. And so what they do for an owner, like, you know, somebody who runs an agency, is they take this repetitive, monotonous, boring as shit process, but needs to be fucking done. And they are able to delegate it because it has step-by-step -step instructions to almost anyone and then they're able to take those processes and when other people run them, they can focus on the actual important things in their business like sales and marketing and hiring and growth and all those kind of things, right? So so it frees them from like the day-to-day, -day, what I call the $2 an hour shitty work. So what you want to do on a first date offer is identify at least one shitty $2 an hour job that your people are doing that that is is common and repetitive and happening in their everyday experience and bring in the tools and resources to help eliminate them and get them these freedom processes and protocols and if you do that that's the basics of your first date offer is i'll take this one horrible task off your plate and help you eliminate it entirely and if you do that your first date offer will be pretty easy and straightforward um where people get hung up in this is they think about my thing. So you mentioned all things that they don't care about. Like nobody wakes up in the middle of the night saying, I, I need SOPs, I need automations, I need workflows. Those are all the solutions to the things that they're experiencing. But they do say, man, like I've made the same landing page a hundred fucking times, right? It, it sucks every single time I do it. And I, I basically say the same shit over and over. And if you come in and say, well, I can build a process for that and you never have to make it ever again. And we can just have like $2 an hour unskilled help create it using your process. Um, I can eliminate, you know, 20 hours of work a week. So my, my advice for you is for your first date offer is identify just one shitty thing they're doing every day that they don't want to be doing for your right person that you can eliminate and your first date offer will write itself. And you'll automatically sell more of it because as soon as you get rid of their worst work, they're going to want more automatically without you even trying to sell it because you'll have, you'll have been a lifesaver. So think about it from their perspective a little more and you'll be able to nail that in. Anthony says... What is the tool everyone uses here to run their agency, meaning CRM, contracts, proposals, bookkeeping, financing, expensive client portal, project management. I'm trying out Zoho One, but it is a pain to set up at first. I want an all-in-one or use a few programs as possible and be efficient. What do you all use? I'm going to give you a little bit of bad news, Anthony. There is no the tool. And I'll tell you why there's no the tool. So the whole point of like what you're describing is... I'd say the most common ones that I've seen people use are Go High Level, um, as well as uh, ClickUp. A lot of folks really like ClickUp. I'm a, an Asana guy. I'm a, just a simple kind of checklist kind of dude. Like I literally, when I figure out things to do, I just make them in checklists. So Asana is really simple for me to get a, your head around. But the whole point of, of a what you're describing is a project management is so that like I have this, we're starting a real estate business right now and I have a, a CRM called Podio and a, a really smart real estate investor helped us build it and integrate it and like you basically use his system. And the whole point of it in like Podio is so I can see what's going on in the entire business in one place, right? Because you mentioned contract, contracts are one thing, marketing is another, CRM, fulfillment, like all of these things are different things, but you want to be able to have a system where you can just look in one place 
and get an accurate snapshot. Now, the reason why there is no one size fits all, because all of our agencies are a little bit different. Some of us are doing SEO. Some of us are making websites. Some of us are running ads on Facebook. Some of us are making TikTok videos. Like they have different steps. So not every CRM is going to be the one size fits all. But the most important thing in a CRM, the single most important thing is not its features, not what it does, which is, are you going to fucking use it? If the answer to that question is yes, then that's the right CRM for you. And all of them, by the way, are a pain in the ass to set up. That's just how it is. Um, but the bigger and bigger, more co complex your agency gets, the more and more pieces need to talk to each other. So in our real estate business, we have buyers, we have leads, we have sellers, we have contracts, we have property inspections, we have legal documents. And so I need all of that in one place. And even though like we have DocuSign over here and we have a buyer's list over there, in Podio, I can check all of that out in one place. So that's the idea you're going for a CRM is you want to be able to know what the fuck is going on in your business. And in Podio, for example, just to give you guys an idea of what that looks like in us. And I'm uh, like, it tells us this, that we had this many leads. There's, we've had this many people called. This is where they're at. This is how many offers we make. This is how many accepted. These are where the things are at with the buyers. This is where the contract status. I can look at all of that in one single place and it looks almost like a Facebook news feed. So in like 30 seconds, I can get a feel for what's going on in the business. That's what you're looking for at that level. And the best CRM for that is whichever fucking one you're gonna use to do that. So I, I gave you some recommendations for tools, but it's not really about the tool. It's about how you'll use it. Uh, Jessica says, this has been my first year running ads on Facebook and results have been really good. Except for the last couple of weeks, my CPAs have been really high. Is it because of Christmas? Do CPAs usually lower back down over Christmas and New Year's? The short answer, Jessica, is yes. Prices go up over Christmas and your costs will go up and they'll go down. The same thing happens, by the way, whenever there's like an election. Whenever there's an election, you can barely buy attention in a news feed. So that like makes all the costs of everything go up. But having said that, Facebook ads fatigue 100% of the time. The longest I've ever had an ad run on Facebook without like falling off a cliff is basically like, I don't know, seven months, I think is our record. Actually, we're up to our record right now. I should say that eight months is the longest we've ever ran ads completely untouched. So having said that, your ads will fall off a cliff 100% of the time, which is part of the reason I'm so big on this offer making skill, because if you understand how to create offers, you can always like revive old ads or you can just change images and you can keep old stuff new for a long, long time without having to make major overhauls and changes. Um, but yes, short answer is costs go up at Christmas because the amount of people competing with you selling Christmas shit, especially in the e-commerce space, just goes up. Um, Daniel says, so I have a dental implant campaign. We've generated 60 leads in two weeks for a free consult. The problem is that the leads are not showing up to the virtual consultation and they're not responding to our automated emails and texts. What should I do to make the patient show up? We have a thank you page with the offer. We have a timer. We have a crazy offer. What is missing? Maybe I should create a new audience, but how are you finding qualified leads? Are you using the top 10% income on interest? Any advice is pre uh, appreciated. Daniel, I I've had the thing you're talking about where you, you run all this paid traffic and it almost works. You get people to a call who don't show up. And that is a symptom of something that's actually happening before that. It's a really good book I have on that called um, Upstream. I recommend you re read it, but the guy tells a story in this book. And the story in the book is... Uh, Something about how there's these two guys sitting on a river and this crying little girl comes by and is like, help me, help me, I'm drowning. And so they both jump in the river and they go rescue her. And then another minute goes by and another little girl goes, help me, help me, I'm drowning. They both jump in to save her. And then a third little girl comes by a minute later and only one guy jumps in and says, help me, help me, I'm drowning. And the other guy goes, where are you going? Like, why, why aren't you helping? And he says, I'm going to go up the river and see why little girls keep fucking drowning is somebody throwing them in like i need to find out the source of the problem and the source of the problem in one word i could say or i guess it's a hyphenated it's maybe counted as two words i don't really know but it's pre-selling meaning you're probably not doing enough to nurture those leads and therefore they're only like 10 20 percent mildly curious interested not and, and this is very common like the more the price goes up right like so implants can be like a 35 40 thousand dollar thing 
right? Like most people don't spend $40,000. Just the same reason like there's more nurturing required to sell a house in real estate than there is to sell a Snickers bar at the counter. And so the, the higher the price goes up, the more nurturing. The other thing I would say to look for is you're probably in a super competitive space dentists where there's probably a lot of other people yelling like we can do implants for you because a lot of dentists want to sell implants and so i don't know if you've ever read eugene schwartz breakthrough advertising but he just describes this market thing that comes up which is inevitably is when markets start to become saturated people make promises that all sound the same and then they start exaggerating that so it starts with we can help you lose five pounds then 10 pounds then 50, then 100, and we can help you lose a billion pounds in a week. And the promises just become not believable and they become re repetitive. And the way out of that is always to come up with a unique mechanism in his book. And you see this in the weight loss space. I'm just highlighting this. You can see this in a different industry. It's like they come out with like, we got green coffee bean or we got uh, acai berry. And now all of a sudden there's, there's a new way to lose weight that's going to this old thing found in the mountains and it's going to change the way your uh, body burns fat and whatever. And because it's a new mechanism, all the typical skepticism and thing that comes along with it gets reinvented because they don't have a box to put you in. And so chances are there's probably a lot of other dentists saying the same kind of shit in your market. And what you need to do is figure out how you can stand out. And it's usually the small but meaningful differences like, uh, you know, maybe like they text you or maybe that you can get a massage or maybe they give you a Starbucks coupon. I don't fucking know what it is, but that's where you want to look at it. Those two things is pre-sell more and make your dental offer stand out because you're probably in a noisy space where there's a lot of people making the same kinds of promises, if I had to guess. Anonymous. I love when you guys are anonymous. You want your questions to be super secretive. Is a market ever oversaturated in an agency business, like an oversaturated niche? If yes... Can you list niches that are oversaturated so newbies can avoid them? Thanks in advance. Um, the word saturated to me is like inversely proportional to the word competitive, right? Competitive, when there's a lot of competition in a niche, I know that's scary to most people, but what that also means almost always is there's a lot of money in those places, right? There wouldn't be a niche and there wouldn't be a lot of competition if there wasn't a lot of money. So like, for example, we're in the personal injury space. That's super competitive. Dentists are super competitive. The general contractors are super competitive. The plumbing and HVAC guys, super competitive. Does that mean you should avoid them? I don't personally think so. Like there's something like uh, 1.3 six million lawyers in America. And to be a really successful agency, you gotta have like maybe 50 to 100 of them. Like, and I'm talking like upper echelons of what most people will achieve success-wise in this business. We're talking like there can be 1.5 million in a market and you need just five zero of them to be wildly successful. So it's not really about competition. What it's really about is standing out from the noise. Having said that, if you do go into like these hyper competitive spaces, the dentist, the injury lawyers, the HVAC and all those things, you're going to have to work harder to get people's attention in the first place because they're going to be more jaded. They're going to have more promises made to them. I've had lawyers tell me I get pitched a hundred times a day, every day, not just from us, not just from marketers. The insurance guys are pitching them. The real estate come like, hey, do you want to get a better location? Guys are pitching them. They're getting pitched like investments on and on and on, right? They're getting pitched all day long, every day. So there's more work required to get attention in like these competitive niches. So a big, big key of that is standing out. And, and the fastest way I've found to do that, which is almost universally true in every niche, is 99% of agencies are focused on, we will bring you more, more leads, more sales, more, 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 more. And most of these people are already overworked. What they don't need is more what they need is better, higher quality. And I call this the nickel in the $100 bill. And it's my way of saying, focus on the most expensive thing they sell and help them convert those. Because almost like somebody mentioned earlier, the dentist implants, if a dentist sells one implant and makes $35,000, a typical checkup, they might make 149. So you might have to bring them like, I don't know, a gazillion checkups to make up for one implant. And a lot of people don't know this, but like a dentist, for example, um, I know this because my mom worked in a dental office for 23 years. They have constant neck and back pain, 
right? And this is true in niches. The contractors, their back hurts. The lawyers are sick of doing paperwork, sitting in an office. They don't want more. They want less of it. And the, almost always the way to bring them less of it is to bring them higher value, higher quality work. So they don't need to work as much, right? Like, the, yeah, okay, a $40,000 implant patient is more work than two checkups, but it's not that much more work, right? They'd much rather do the higher end work. And so whenever a niche is super saturated, I just find ways to to bring them their highest value thing. And almost always you'll stand out from the noise in almost any niche by doing that. Um, next one we got from Arsam who says, how do you rate the following copywriting skills of AI? This is chat G GPT. We got a whole lot of AI talk going on this week. Given prompt, write a persuasive landing page copy that sells a memory improvement course. The landing page should include headline, subheadline, body text, button call to action, bullets, and a story. Headline, unlock your full memory potential with our memory improvement course. Subheadline, say goodbye to forgetfulness and hello to a razor sharp memory with our proven techniques and strategies. Body text. Are you tired of forgetting important dates, names, and tasks? Do you struggle to retain new information? Our memory improvement course is here to help. Our comprehensive program is designed to boost your memory and improve your cognitive function. With our expert-led lessons and interactive exercises, you'll learn powerful techniques to remember anything and everything. Don't let a weak memory hold you back any longer. Our course is suitable for people of all ages and learning styles, so you can start improving your memory today. You'll have a lifetime access to our materials, so you can revisit them anytime and keep your memory sharp. Button, sign up now. Bullets, boost your memory and cognitive function, learn proven techniques, strategies, suitable, uh, suitable for people of all ages and learning styles, lifetime access to materials. Uh, story, I used to struggle to remember even the most basic things. I would constantly forget appointments and important dates, and I was always misplacing my keys. It was starting to affect my work and personal life. That's when I decided to try the memory improvement course. The program was exactly what I needed. The lessons were easy to understand, and the interactive exercises really helped me retain information. I started seeing improvements in memory almost immediately almost immediately. Now I feel more confident and organized. I'm no longer forgetful and I can remember even the most complex information with ease. If you want to improve your memory, I highly recommend the memory improvement course. It's completely transformed my life and it can do the same for you. All right. So how do I rate chat G GTP? I think it's cool. Firstly, having said that, I don't rank that very highly. I, I should say, let's put an asterisk on that. If your goal is to use chat GTP in this example to sell a $27 ebook and struggle for sales in it, then you just nailed that from a copy perspective. This is why I think people are way too excited for the capability of, of AI because yes, it, it wrote decent copy, but like I look at it like offer making and identifying the right who is like 90% of the equation and you can't easily outsource that, at least as of today, to an AI. So I'll give you an example of how this is true. Like there are always sub pockets in there of people who really need their memory. I'll give you a real example, okay? I was reading a post from a guy because I'm, I'm into learning languages. I speak some German. Um, I got a little French and uh, my Spanish is like so-so, but improving. And uh, so I don't know. I'm... I, I was reading a post from another guy learning a language and he said, I just moved to Germany and in order to get work, I need to be able to speak the language and every day I don't understand the language, I'm losing money and I just can't remember this shit. And so I'm losing money every single day that my memory is not working. If you wrote a post or a hand raiser or an offer to that kind of person, you could sell that same memory course for like $10,000 because it's about the result they want, which is to be able to learn this shit faster and get hired today um, kind of thing. But if you just want like a, um, see, this is what happens in this case is like, it's a generic hammer. It's like a, anyone can improve their memory with dates and blah, blah, blah. And if you sell the hammer as the hammer, uh, it did a very good job of that. And you're going to get 27 bucks for that. But I want to help you guys sell $10,000 premium kind of things or $5,000 or $1,000, whatever premium is for you, $100,000 if you want. Um, the number's not really important, but like to really help change people's lives. And that's not done by putting that stuff in a chat bot. So it's it's nailed the, the pain points and the specifics, but it's missed the bigger picture. 
And that's where I think you guys bring the real value is understanding the vision. So like I said earlier, half of the battle is just identifying like, who are we making this offer to? So in this case, it's a generic, come one, come all, anyone of all ages, we can improve your memory. And that's the easiest way to be low paid. If we can identify someone specific who has a very high need for memory, like somebody who needs to urgently learn a language or somebody who needs to pass an exam next week and hasn't been to the course in six months, you're going to identify premium solutions and people that you can actually like make a real impact for. So I don't think it's bad, but I, I wouldn't be worried about those of you guys who are worried about uh, AI replacing. It, it's only replacing like basic $2 an hour, or I should say like $20 an hour copywriting, not like $1,000 an hour offer making. And as long as you guys learn those skills, you'll never be that hard up for business. Um, Oral says, opinions on that. Business buddy and I had a date call with a lead uh, startup from the real estate injury. Here is the mail we would like to send next before eventually submitting an offer. Thanks, guys. Uh, it mentions their skills, their team, their savings, their exclusivity, and their network. Um, I'm all for pre-selling, by the way. I mean, this is essentially what you're doing. And Dan Kennedy has a name for these. I mentioned this in, in our reply, but Dan Kennedy has a name for these called um, shock and awe packages. And I first time I saw one of these, I actually signed up for a lawyer to just curious to see. And he was a Dan Kennedy student. He was, I think the guy's name was Chet, C-H-E-T. And he sent me uh, a booklet, like by mail, physically. Uh, just one day I get a box in the mail. There's his book in there that says everything about like, accident cases. He had two DVDs full of video testimonials. He had three or four copies of his NAS, uh, last newsletter. And he had like 18 pages of testimonials that said, I'm the shit. And this is what happens, what you receive when you say, I'm an interested lead. Now, does that infect conversions later? Of course it fucking does. Of course, right? So the more you can like build those elements intentionally into your process so that by the time you get to the sale, they already know who you are, what you do, how much it costs, why it's different. I'm all for those things. So like, yeah, keep doing that. The only thing I would say is I've personally found it makes a bigger impact when it physically shows up in the mail versus like, hey, check out this PDF that tells you why we should work together. Um, a lot of times PDFs don't get read, get, don't get read, but when a big box of shit shows up in the mail, you're at least like, what is this? And even though I never read a word of the guy's book, immediately I know he's an author. Immediately I know, I didn't read the testimonials, but I know he has them. His status in my mind goes to here and he becomes a premium lawyer. It's the same thing with agency work. So for those of you guys who are interested in getting them created, Dan Kennedy calls these shock and awe packages. You can find a whole bunch of them on YouTube. Check them out. We've got a few of those. Uh, um, depending on the tier of client we're going after, like they can, of course, we hit them with like, you know, the books and the testimonials and all the proof elements before we work together. Um, Keth, our man says, hey, Frankie Finn, I'm going to, I'm going to run gratitude campaigns. Should I send emails to the whole customer list at once or should I dose them to extend the service for some weeks or months? Thanks in advance. Um, Keth, I, I think about, okay, so... Our value in entrepreneurs is, and this is like one of the things I've, I really have to kind of go back to a lot because I don't think people understand it. Almost all of us grow up poor and middle class and poor and middle class values say the longer it takes to do something, the, the more stretched out in time, the more inefficient. You see this when you go to the government and you need a fucking document and you got to wait in 18 lines and, you know, it costs $150 and they tell you it's, we're closed today, come back tomorrow, then wait eight weeks and it's just inefficient nonsense, right? Entrepreneurs are not paid like that. We're paid for results we produce. Now, the other issue I, th I think you're alluding to is like, will I burn people out if I just message everybody at once real fast and just kind of blast the entire list? And he let me tell you something. You know when, the bad, when it's a bad time to say thank you to your customers? The answer is never. Fucking never. And people never get tired of being thanked. So gratitude campaigns, if you sent one last week, you can send another one today. If you sent one yesterday, you can send another one today. If you sent one this morning, you can send another one today. People don't get tired of being thanked and genuinely appreciated. So as long as you're doing that, um, the only scenario I've, I've had over 
dosing them. So like, for example, um, we're doing a couple of revenue share cam- campaigns right now with some big people and their buyers list is so fucking big that if all their buyers respond at once, we won't be able to manage all the replies. So what we're doing is we're setting it up within, in this case, they're using MailChimp. We have it in MailChimp. So every like 30 minutes, like a thousand new emails go out and that way the responses get staggered over like a day and a half instead of like all come in at once. And that's by design so we can like manage the flow. But that's the only reason to dose them. Otherwise, what will happen typically is if you send a gratitude campaign and it works and they get new business, which typically is the case, unless they've kind of screwed people over, the first question they're going to have is like, what else can we do? And so it's really just a matter of coming up with more campaigns. It's not really that hard. Like businesses make this hard. It's just like little extra value ads. I've thought about this before because I love cooking. So I I think one day like it would be cool to own a restaurant, but I don't really want to work in a restaurant. So, uh, but I always found the restaurant run business fascinating. I kind of played with it in my mind. I was like, if this restaurant wanted to grow their business every time I'm in a restaurant, like what would they do? And I would say like, firstly capture their customer list at the actual table, like say, you know, text ABC or to one, two, three, and you'll get a free appetizer today, or you get a free something with your meal and get them on a list. And then the other thing is you could have endless reasons to thank them and to come in. We got a band playing tonight. We just got a fresh shipment of tomatoes this morning. We made mama made extra tomato sauce, right? We got a special on chicken parm this afternoon. We, uh, I don't know, we got a new, new bartender in and he made a new drink. And so we're coming in. We got it for 99 cents. Come try our free drink. We're making milkshakes here in the back and thought we'd include you guys. Come on down for a milkshake. Hey, between three and six, we got half price appetizers. Like there's endless fucking reasons you can invite people back. Businesses generally don't, but that's not because you can't do it. So my answer is don't dose them. Send it out as soon as you possibly can. And when it works, what businesses will say is, I want more of that. And the more it works, by the way, the more you're going to be paid for the fact that it works. Maybe not directly on this client. Sometimes you'll be underpaid for that client, but they will rant and rave about how awesome you are to the next client. Or they'll be able to make a great testimonial or a case study that you can use to sell more clients in the future. So if you're doing that, the best possible work, like by the people never get bored of being thanked. And you can always find reasons to thank them. Um, It's just businesses are too busy in the trenches to even think about doing it. Plus they have a predisposition to believe they need more new, which they generally don't. Um, Guy, Guy, Guy or Guy, I'm gonna go with Guy here. What client reporting software is recommended for providing call tracking information from CallRail, analytics from Google Analytics and ranking report? So this is all presented in one nice white labeled PDF. I see Chris Dreyer from rankings.io uses agency analytics. So I'm guessing this is what is recommended. Um, guy, my man, I've seen it done three ways. I'm going to tell you the Frankie Finn ghetto way last. Um, so first way is, as you mentioned, agency analytics. I've never used it. I've heard from people who have. It's kind of expensive. But if you want all in one reporting, I'm told they're the best option. Two, I've seen people create custom dashboards in go high level and same idea, which is you want all your important reports um, in one place. And I'll tell you the getaway that I do it. And I'm not saying this is the best way or the most efficient way, but I just hire like one of my VAs and just every week they go through and they compile a report and they send it to me and it's very manual. It's $2 and they have to go into, like you said, Google analytics and gather the number here. And they have to go into the call tracking, and gather the numbers there. And they have to pull this information from places. But eventually what you get is a neat little report and you can find the health and status of your business by looking at one little uh, simple sheet. Um, having said that, the most important thing is what I just said is, is, is what you alluded to, which is getting it all in one place. Is because the more you can show it in one place, What will happen is you can say, we spent this much money, we had this much business. And essentially you can say like, hey, we've got a five to one return on investment or we got a 10 to one return on investment. And so they can see like this shit is working in one like little simple screenshot. That's the effect you're going for is you want them to be able to look at it and make a quick snap judgment. Hey, this shit's working. If you can do that in one simple place, then you're rocking it. Um, Benjamin says, my main concern With the digital marketing scene flooded with an all-time high of agency owners, is there enough space for all of us or there just 
too little riches in too few niches. Um, I'll pick on myself a little bit here for this one, Benjamin. So when I first started, um, I, there was a forum called the Warrior Forum, and that was where like the height of internet marketing knowledge that I knew of anyway, maybe not like in the world, but. And folks would, uh, what's up, Steve? My God, dude, I hope you're feeling better. Um, the, uh, so the Warrior Forum was this old shitty forum where people sold eBooks and it was like, at least for me, it was the height of internet marketing knowledge. And I remember um, I was looking at the, those early days in 2007 for like a technique. How do you make, what's, this, what's the technique that's gonna make money online? And what I found were all kinds of crazy things. Like I, I literally tried like 200 different ideas, some really out there shit. I spammed uh, backlink tools all over the internet. That was one of, I did a thing called e-whoring. E-whoring is where you like impersonate a pretty girl and guys will come try and hit you up on the internet and talk to you. And you say, oh, uh, I'm not on this app very much. Go talk to me on the dating app. And every time they would sign up for the dating app, you'd make a buck or two bucks or four bucks or 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, and what I found is almost always the, the door would shut for various reasons on these techniques. And eventually after two years, I got wise to the fact that it was just easier to build a real business than to try and find the, the hackable technique that I, all this time I had wasted trying to find the shortcut, I could have just b built something real. And I'll tell you, the reason I say that is because building any real fucking business it doesn't matter whether it's an agency or an ice cream store or a consulting business or an e-commerce. Like it takes time to build momentum and it takes work and effort of putting one foot in front of the other day after day, especially the days where you don't fucking feel like doing it. And so even though there are a lot of people who would call themselves agency owners, I never think there's actually too much competition because most of these people will give up within six months. And this is not just true of like agency work. And I'm not judging it because I gave up on endless number of ideas that I didn't follow through in the beginning. But having said that, I would actually say there is a shortage of good quality help in our space, especially as uh, the amount of like media and, and like complexity. So like I, I see this with lawyers, like they have to run TV, they have to run radio, they have to run billboards, they have to have referral systems, they have to be on TikTok. They have to be on Facebook, they have to be on Instagram, they have to be on Twitter, and they have to run Google ads, they have to be SEOing their website, they have to have a website they manage. Like, they need a lot of fucking help to get that done. And I think there's a shortage of good help, not an abundance of it. And so the biggest reason most agency owners fail, in my opinion, is they don't just commit to solving the problem in front of them. And they're probably just like I was in the beginning, where they have this short-term thinking of like, hey, I hear you can sell $2,000 a month packages to local businesses and get rich doing that. And not that that's not true, but like there's, there's, there's a learning curve with it like anything else. So even though I think there's a lot of people who call themselves agency owners, there's not a lot of people who know how to do this well. And then I would say there's a sub niche of people that are really good at what they do, but don't necessarily know how to market themselves, which is ironic that marketing your own agency and then helping people are different things. Like helping people with marketing and then marketing your own business are two separate things. And I do see people who are really good, like I'm really good at SEO, but I don't know how to sell my SEO. Or I'm really good at running Google ads, but I don't know how to sell my Google ads kind of thing. Um, that's a common thing, but no, I don't think our space is flooded. I think there's, our space is flooded with a lot of like kind of newbies and beginners. And that's kind of a function of the fact that it's a low barrier to entry, right? So I saw this when I worked, uh, when I was in college, I worked for a, a, a die stamping place. It was like manufacturing and they only had three people in all of North America who did what they did. And the reason is really simple is in order to get started, you had to invest $100 million into equipment. And there weren't many people willing to invest $100 million into equipment. Ergo, there are only three people in North America you could buy stamping dies for one of them. Um, having an agency, the barrier to entry is you gotta have a fucking laptop and an internet connection and, and be able to have, like create a free basic profile. And for that reason, yes, like there's always gonna be a, an influx of new people trying to learn this, but those people also go out the turnstile just as fast as they come in. And that's why I say it takes time to build momentum and stand out from the noise. There are repetitions required that most people, it's like anything else. Like 
if you if you try and ride a bike one time, don't fucking bother. If you're trying to get in healthy by drinking one green juice, don't bother. If you're trying to get in shape by exercising one fucking time, don't bother. So there's a lot of people who come in, try exercise one time, and then go, fuck, I'm sore, and that was hard, and give up. But having said that, no, I don't think our space is saturated. It appears on the surface to be crazy saturated when in reality the, the, the quality help on the back end, especially for the top part of the market that is the real doers, there's actually a lack of help. Um, and so I think the actually like the opportunity is actually bigger than it's ever been. And then you throw in the fact that like some of these people are like trying crypto and NFTs and adding stuff that's out there and they're adding AI and they're adding chat bots and they're adding Facebook messenger bots. Like there, there's a shortage of good help, not a, not too much of it where people get trapped is they make offers and packages that all sound too similar to the market and therefore can't stand out. But if you figure out that skill, it's like the whole thing gets easier. So I hope that's a quality rant that helps you. Um, Benjamin. Looks like that's it for all the questions. Thank you, Cole. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Steve, for your wonderful comments. Um, you guys, by, by the way, all three of you individually are fucking awesome. And I'm not just like blowing smoke up your ass. Like I, Steve and I have many, many, many long conversations over WhatsApp about how cool he is. Um, so anyway, um, just wanted to do a little um, recap from the beginning is uh, just mention that we're going to be doing a Loom workshop after Christmas. And this is for those of you guys who want to take your sales process from this complicated of like full calendar talking to people all the time. And I always felt like I was pursuing and chasing deals and having them more come to you on a plate where you just float out a little soft offer. People say, I want to know more about that. And then when they say they're interested, you, you have a little text, ask them a question or two, send them a video. And then they send you a Stripe payment and say, I'm in. Or some of them say, no, that's cool too. But at least you don't have to uh, chase that. And the cool thing about it too is it actually, even the ones who say no, it, it leaves the door open for business later. I found this the sales process, the typical one, is so pushy that most people follow, that we used to follow, that when people were a no, it definitely didn't leave the door open for later. So for those of you guys who are interested in that, I'm going to throw that out there with an irresistible offer um, to get you guys. And actually, one of the things that you guys can do is uh, check out that video if you're interested in creating your own Loom videos as a structure, because it will be the same Loom video kind of format that we're doing on the workshop. Like we're, we practice what we preach here. So if you're interested, even if you're not like interested in the offer and that's, you know, or timing wise, it doesn't make sense for you right now, that's totally cool. I would have you guys check out the video just so you can model your own after understanding what I'm doing. And if you do that, like you can make your uh, whole process whole bunch easier so that's all i got on that front another uh, just a, a last reminder that i forgot to mention we're probably going to take next week off and i'll see you guys i think it'll be in the new year but two mondays from now and i hope you guys all have awesome holidays you get cool stuff for your family i don't know if any of you guys are in similar situations to me or there's some last minute packages you're going i sure hope they show up on <laughs> time we got a few amazon in transit i'm like Fingers crossed, man. Like you never know in Mexico, the post office here is super hit and miss. It's not like a first world country where it gets here most of the time on time when it'll say it do with, with a couple of exceptions here. There's only a 50% chance it'll arrive. So we'll see. Might have a, a bare Christmas in a, a big old house here. So much love for you guys. I hope you guys have awesome holidays. I, I so, so appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. And uh, from my family to yours, enjoy.